the choices you make are going to reflect your life in the years to come. What's up guys, it's Kevin Thompson back here with another video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Today, we are gonna be talking about The 50th Law by 50 Cent and Robert Greene. I first got this book in 2016 and I'm just now reading it in 2020. It was given to me by one of my dad's friends and she thought that it would be very beneficial to me and I, I wish I read it a lot sooner, but I'm glad that I read it, period, and I'm glad that I had it. So I'm gonna just do a deep dive into a few really, really good points that were made by both the authors. I titled this video, The 10 Best Ideas, but there are so many ideas in this book that are just amazing. So I'm gonna try to keep this video as short as possible and really get down to the key main points here. So like my other video, The Alchemist, I'm going to be doing these in no specific order, just from beginning to end. So I will be reading off quotes that I found that were really important. Overall, the book is about 50 Cent in his life and how he went through the streets and from selling drugs to doing rap music. It also tells some small stories about other successful people and you know, just, just really self-development and how successful people get to where they are. Just some uh, broad ideas about how you can become a better version of yourself, really. So the first quote here is on page 37, and it says, you were born with the greatest weapon in all of nature, the rational conscious mind. Oh my God, how many more times do I have to say on this channel that your mind is the most important asset? That is why the link in my description, Master Your Mind Overnight Millionaire Mastery, is the first link that I put in there is because it's not the cheapest, but it's the most important. It's going to be the key for anyone in any industry that is doing anything they want to do to get to that higher level and, and really take your mind to the next level. The next set of ideas comes from three different pages. They're all in order, so it's 61, 62, and 63. On 61, it says, your life must be a progression towards ownership. Page 62 says, the problem when we work for others is that so much of this becomes dead time that we want to pass as quickly as possible, time that is not ours. And 63 says, keep in mind the following, what you really value in life is ownership, not money. In my video last week, what is e-commerce? I briefly spoke on black consumerism and how people need to be more aware of where our money is going because instead of buying all these clothes that are meaningless to us, we could be spending our money investing in ourselves and building ourselves up so the next generation is not where we are because we should always be moving forward. That is the key. So we're not going to be able to move forward if we're just throwing our money away. And yes, that is throwing our money away. As minorities, it is important for us to own things. It is important for us to be in those positions to make significant changes and make decisions because if we are only fighting to get to that top spot, the person in the top spot most likely is not going to give it to us because they're going to stereotype us as not being able to do it i'm really going to keep it 100 with you guys it's no excuse for us these days to not be able to create we have the internet we have access to superb technology and i hear so many excuses nowadays and of course it's going to be very hard for us to attain these levels and attain these positions we're going to have to work twice as hard to get half as much but we are still progressing we are still moving forward we're not sitting on our asses and complaining all day you know like right now for the black lives matter movement i cannot do anything like i can talk to you guys and i can tell you guys the importance of it but in reality i cannot do anything because i am not good with myself like i am not at my best so in order for me to really make a difference i'm going to need to build myself up and then eventually one day I can go out and help these organizations that are helping other people because, you know, they say it all starts with you and 
we need to be helping each other but i'm going to be able to help people on a much wider scale if i fix myself first and attain that wealth that i can share with other people i can donate to organizations that are helping a wide variety of people instead of just going out and protesting and maybe donating a few hundred dollars to a local charity i can donate internationally i can travel and i can disperse wealth within the communities by actually going there and spending my money in the community you know so we have to we have to work on ourselves and stop making excuses you know people might say i have privilege because you know i grew up in a certain area but at the end of the day i'm still a black man and i'm choosing to go out of my way to read books i'm choosing not to spend all my time just smoking weed and watching tv like these are all my choices what choices do you make the choices you make are going to reflect your life in the years to come the next big idea here is on page 66 and it says people are rarely different the world cannot help but to respond to such authenticity so I'm really hoping that who I am as a person is going to relay really well to the public because you don't really see a lot of people like me like that might sound like a brag but it's true there's not a lot of people like me especially in this industry so I want to be that voice for people who might not have the privilege to do what I'm doing. They might not have the privilege of time. They might not have the privilege of having money that they don't have to go out and work for. They might not have the privilege of having an iPhone 10 that is great camera quality that I can make YouTube videos with. So I'm trying to use the bit of advantage that I do have to make a difference and have a voice for some of the people that are just like me. I was listening to Gary Vee this morning and he was saying the importance of being yourself and not apologizing for being yourself. You know, a lot of people say this, but it really hit me when he said it because I was thinking to my channel and, and me trying to be like other people and me not knowing where I'm headed with this, but I just have to make content. Like that's really all I can do. I can only put myself out there for you guys and hope that someone hears me, hope that you guys like it enough to stick around and keep watching you have to not be concerned with what other people are doing and not be concerned with whether you're measuring up or not because one day you could probably be the same to someone else like one day i might be the person that someone else wants to be so you know like i'm trying to be like someone else but one day someone is going to try to be like me you know what i'm saying so it's very important to be yourself because everyone has their type of tea you know what i'm saying so i have two quotes here Page 77 says, mentally framing a negative event as a blessing in disguise makes it easier for you to move forward. It is a kind of mental alchemy transforming into sugar. Another quote that ties into this is on page 80. It says, by simply embracing the moment as something positive and necessary, you have already converted it into gold. A mechanism that successful people use is always looking at all the negatives as opportunities in life a lot of people go to college and they end up you know wasting money because they keep switching their major but you know I would rather switch my major 50 times and end up knowing what I want to do than keeping the same major that I started out with and not enjoying it and then wasting years of my life being unhappy in a job that I hate it's the same thing as seeing opportunities in negative situations. You can choose to look at switching your major as a negative thing, or you can choose to say, hey, I'm finding out what I really wanna do in life, and later on I'm actually gonna be happy because I took the time and I took the risk to switch around and figure out what I want to do. I spent hundreds and thousands of dollars on courses. Now I am being able to teach you those courses. I'm looking at that as an opportunity, not that I wasted my money with courses that I'm no longer using, but as I can teach you guys how to build up your businesses in those industries because I already know. You know, I can give you guys the free information that I got in the course. Like I can't resell the course, but I can still give you guys that information for free. So maybe you won't even have to buy the course. So I'm still using that negative situation 
in my favor. Page 131, he briefly talks about Richard Wright, and I'm actually filming on Richard Wright's books right now. I have two of his books, and basically coming up as an author, he face a lot of criticism of course people who are on their way to success face so many detriments that an ordinary person or an average person would just quit and they wouldn't keep going because they listen to what everyone else thinks so let me get into the quote they sense your lack of respect and they feel justified in mistreating you self-respect is so important because if you're letting other people dictate what you can and can't do you're never going to be able to do the things that you're meant to do in life. You know, if you let someone tell you that you can't pack up and move to Hollywood and become a famous actress or an actor, then that's going to get to you and you're never even going to try. I'm watching the L word again. I'm rewatching it right now with my girlfriend and the character in there, Jenny, is a writer, but she keeps getting denied. And in one scene they had her whole wall and she put up another rejection letter and there was like 30 rejection letters on her wall but when i seen that i said oh she's gonna she's gonna be successful because i know that when i see someone who is actively losing actively failing if they keep going with that they're going to win because they're actively increasing their odds of winning by failing and moving on from that but if you're not trying, then you're never, ever going to get there. Like, never. It's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to get there if you don't do anything about it. Another quote with another idea is on page 185. It says, When we are confronted with people or individuals who have different values and belief systems, we feel threatened. Our first move is not to understand them, but to demonize them. I love being a trans person who passes because I can't be discriminated against if I'm first meeting someone. Unless I tell them that I'm trans, they can't be discriminatory against me. Once we start filling each other out and once we get to know each other and I do end up telling them that, it changes their whole perspective on what a trans person is because they didn't expect that from me. In my other channel, I talked about the documentary Disclosure and how trans people have been depicted in the media throughout the decades and how it's only just now recently getting better. I'm young, so I didn't really get to see all that. So I came into a world where trans people were already looked down upon before I was even here. So I know that I'm very lucky to be in a time where I have access to you know, proper, proper things when it comes to my healthcare because healthcare is very important to trans people. And that's why I'm so disgusted with the Trump administration and what they're doing with that because it's already hard enough having to have my birth name and my new legal name that I have changed on my driver's license and, you know, having to go into a place where they almost deny me my medication that I need to look like this, to have this appearance because my names are different because i haven't had my name changed on my birth certificate and i can't get my name changed on my health insurance card and you know it's illegal to carry two ids but how am i supposed to get my stuff otherwise if i can't even prove that my old name is still me so it's very complicated the natural reaction for people who don't understand is to make fun of or hate and hate causes wars like hate will destroy a society so if we come to start listening better because obviously we have two ears and one mouth for a reason if we start listening to others and don't jump the gun to start judging people it's not our lives it's theirs and the fact that gay marriage has just become legal is like like what does that matter to someone who is straight like that is not affecting you at all and if it is affecting you you're letting it affecting you you're choosing for someone's sexuality and who they choose to sleep with behind closed doors you're choosing for that to affect you and you're uncomfortable because you're choosing to feel that okay feelings are free and feelings are a choice if you want to be happy you can go out and be happy right now it don't cost you anything that goes for understanding as well. You can choose to try to understand someone. And even if you don't agree with them, you can, you know, kind of sympathize with what they're saying 
and tell them like, hey, I don't agree with what you're doing, but I'm going to respect you for being 100% and being yourself because like, who wants a fake person? Like, I, I know I would rather someone be real with me and tell me the truth than just lie to try to make me feel some type of way. Like, we gotta be real. The next quote is on 201 and it says, a really intelligent man feels what other men only know. This goes back to what I say about feeling rich and you know feeling wealthy like i feel that even though i'm not wealthy i don't have millions of dollars people they see rich but they don't feel it so they'll never be it you know like you have to feel it before you can attain it a lot of the times you can't just get rich like it won't work you have to program your mind to feel it you have to you have to get in the mindset that this can happen to you and that it will happen to you and that it is happening to you currently like it's it's currently your reality that's how you have to feel if you want to attain that level of success all right so this next idea is split up into like five different quotes so just hang with me i'm just going to read all of them and then i'll talk about them once i'm done the first quote is on page 210 it says most people can't handle boredom that means they can't stay on one thing until they get good at it and they wonder why they're unhappy the next quote is on 214. It says, before it is too late, we must wake up and realize that real power and success can only come through mastering a process. Part of this comes from seeing early on in life the tangible results that come from such rigorousness and patience. The next quote is 217, and it says, all of man's troubles come from not knowing how to sit still alone in a room. The next quote, 219, says, To reach the end of anything, to master a process, requires time, focus, and energy. And the last related quote is, Anything will give way to a sustained, persistent attack on your part. All of that really is, is just hard work and dedication. You know, that's really cliche, but it's true. Like, my philosophy is... If I keep kicking at the door of success, it is going to fly open one day. Like it's going to it's going to open because I'm being persistent in my efforts toward it, okay? Hard work and dedication is such a simple thing to think about, but sometimes it takes months and years to actually know how to do it. You know, it, it takes discipline to know how to actively work on something consistently for a long period of time you know it you can definitely be focused on a goal but if you can't do it for a long time then you're never going to be able to master that thing okay i think all of those quotes were pretty self-explanatory so just kind of contemplate those and i'm going to move on to the next idea the next idea comes from page 240 and page 241 so 240 says if at any moment he had doubted himself or accepted the normal limits to his mobility, he would be dead or powerless, which was as good as dead in his mind. Page 241 says, Your opinion of yourself becomes your reality. If you have all these doubts, then no one will believe in you and everything will go wrong. If you think the opposite, the opposite will happen. It's that simple. This, this whole book, this whole idea like i'm gonna get so sick and tired of trying to tell people like how to be successful but he just said it like it's it's up to you like it's up to you to want to change your mind it's up to you to want to think positive thoughts about yourself it's up to you if you want to be successful to think yourself into it you can think yourself into success like it might sound silly but you can't just you know, try positive affirmations for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, even a couple of months. You can't just try it for a couple of months. Like this has to be a lifestyle. If you want to find success, success is a lifestyle. You can't just be successful up until the point where the money starts pouring in and then just give it up because your money is going to disappear. It's going to dry up and you're going to be back to square one. If you want to be committed to it, if it is worth it to you, you will change your mind. Next idea is page 243. So it says, there's another fearless way of approaching your life. 
it begins by untying yourself from the opinions of others i wanted to go about this journey alone and really in isolation and I said before that I didn't even tell my girlfriend that I was doing all this at first because I didn't want any outside opinions. Um, I only have one friend, shout out to that one friend, she's the one liking these videos, she's the only one liking these videos so far, but I don't really tell anyone, I haven't still, like still to this day, I haven't told anyone. It's been months and I haven't told even some of my closest friends that I'm doing this because I don't want any outside opinions, I don't want any bias because I don't want to be influenced. I want to keep the noise where it's at and I want to just grind. Like I want to grind really hard. This is like the iceberg right now. You know how you only see the tip of the iceberg and the majority is under? Well, underneath the iceberg is all my struggles, all my late nights. I stay up till at least three in the morning every day and I'm still up in the morning. So most of the times I'm staying up between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. That's when I go to bed. Sometimes even like 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and I'm working like all this, all the editing, all the behind the scenes, all the meditating, all of that is the underneath the iceberg. Right now, I'm just keeping my head down and grinding. And one day I'm going to come up and people are going to be hit. Like a lot of people are going to be like, how did he get rich? They're going to think that I got rich quick. But this is all a part of the plan. Like all of this work that I'm putting in, like it's, it's going to pay off. And I put in a lot of work recently and I'm not nearly to the 10,000 hour mark that Malcolm Gladwell talks about. And he talks about that in Outliers and I'm going to be sharing Outliers with you in a couple weeks as well. Um, you have to reach 10,000 hours to master something and if you're not choosing to make the time for something that you really want to do, then it's going to take you that much longer to actually attain that goal. So. If you're serious about something, you would be working on it every day. I don't really know anyone in my immediate surroundings who has a goal that they work on on, on a daily. I don't want to just hang around with nobodies. Like I want to hang with millionaires. I wish I had millionaires in my surroundings. I don't even know like when I'm gonna start telling people. I think I might have to start telling people when I jump back on Instagram. And you know, Instagram being active on there is going to help me start getting more followers and, and upping my following, but I'm not telling anyone, like I'm not telling nobody. So if you're watching this and you know me, this is probably way after I'm recording this because I haven't told you and I haven't told anyone. A lot of people I know, they get on Instagram, they get on Snapchat and they post all this stuff, but they only post it for like a week or two, maybe a month, they might post it for a little bit, but I'm not posting anything like I don't want no one to know I want people to think that I got rich quick I do I want people to think that it just happened to me but they're gonna go back and they're gonna look at everything that I've done up until that point and they're gonna be like whoa like he was actually working low-key the last idea that I'm gonna talk about here guys and then I'm gonna let you go if attaining certain goals become your greatest source of pleasure then your days are filled with purpose and direction and whenever death comes, you have no regrets. What you do, you must do well with all of your energy. Right now, YouTube is my focus. My dream is inspiring people and you know, eventually having people actually read my books. Don't get me wrong, I love multitasking, but I've learned the hard way that that is not something that is going to bring success. Like I'm going to be better off just focusing on doing this for a while until I actually see results, like significant results, and then I'll move on maybe to start playing around with drop shipping. But I don't have time to play around with that right now, and that is not my passion. So I don't want to do that, but I still want to give as much information as I can and that I have on that subject, but that is not what I'm focusing on. So whatever you guys want to do, like you have to be dedicated to that thing, whether that be meditating. Meditating, I was really focused on meditating at the beginning of June. I was meditating three times a day for an hour total. Now I meditate twice a day for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes a day, but I had to take those extra minutes so that I could start learning how to properly meditate. And I'm still learning to this day because I think so much, like I know a lot of people do, but I think a lot, like a lot, I know I do. And sometimes I can't even focus on just breathing. So that is always going to be something I'm working at and I'm not gonna get discouraged that I can't properly meditate. People just kind of feel like they're not meditating properly and they give up at it, but meditating properly is going to take a lot of work 
and even people who meditate for years even venture off and they don't meditate properly like I don't think that you have to necessarily perfect anything you do like my edits on this video and all, all my videos they're not going to be perfect but at least I'm trying my best and putting it out there that's what I learned from Walt Disney I learned that in college one time I was walking by a door and somebody had it written on their door and Walt Disney was basically saying like if you try your best like that should be enough and I've always taken that advice um everywhere that i've gone and and you know in school also if my best in a class is a b then so be it like i'm not going to be hurt about that because at the end of the day i know i tried my best and that's all that matters like you can't put so much of your energy into negative stuff if you put your energy more into positive things rather than the negative things that you're going to be well off and it's going to benefit you more than just dwelling on what didn't go right so um i love you guys stay up and i'll see you in the next video peace